Okay, so technically you can't have the diagnosis of orthostatic hypotension in POTS at the same time in the same person. My name is Dr. Nathan Kaiser at the Kaiser Clinic here in Chelsea, Michigan, and we specialize in helping people with neurological problems to be able to do some neuro rehab and get them back on track. And that's what we're going to talk about today. A case come in today that had been diagnosed at the hospital with both orthostatic hypotension and POTS. And it's not the first time I've heard that, so I thought it'd be worth walking through why that doesn't work and how that may be able to help people move through the diagnostic process and kind of figure out where they're at, what they can do to get better. So let's draw this out a little bit. When we're thinking about both of these conditions, we really want to start from the place of thinking about blood pressure. When blood pressure, especially in orthostatic hypotension, right? So we come up and then hypotension means low pressure, tension. So low blood pressure. So that blood pressure drops. And then normally the way we want to think about heart rate is that heart rate should come alongside blood pressure and pull it up. Right? So it's like it lassos that blood pressure, pulls it up, it rescues it. And that's how that function works. This is where we think about POTS because in a, in the case of POTS, we're saying explicitly that one of the diagnostic criteria for POTS is that there is no orthostatic hypotension. So that's the rule, meaning if there is orthostatic hypotension, that's what we call it. So you can't have both. Now, if you run into a scenario though, where the heart rate is able to effectively pull the blood pressure back to a baseline. That's what POTS looks like. So it tells you that the heart rate compensation is able to stabilize the blood pressure over here. That would signify that there are, are some certain reflexes and processes that have to be able to be accurate in order to sense where the blood pressure is that it's fallen in the first place or to keep it in that tight range. So in this case, we know that that system works. Now, if we slide back over here and talk about orthostatic hypotension, that's what we were looking at in this case where she was actually passing out and having syncopal events. And that is not something that we see with POTS. At POTS, the cerebral perfusion maintains it at a rate that allows us to be able to maintain consciousness. In this case, she's fainting. She's passing out. She's blacking out because her blood pressure is dropping. They've measured that. So when we think about this orthostatic hypotension, we can think about it in a couple ways. So number one, we want to say, does this blood pressure, as it's dropping, is the heart rate just non-responsive. It's not doing anything. And in that case, we know the pressure receptor that should be detecting this blood pressure and sending it up to the brain is just not kicking in. Option number two is we've got blood pressure falling and then the heart rate goes ahead and falls with it. Now this is less common, but this would be like a vasovagal type, type of a syncope where we actually get a cardio inhibitory response. So the way the, the vagus nerve will come and inhibit the SA node is so intense that it actually creates these large gaps in time where the heart doesn't beat. It slows down the heartbeat so much that it stops pumping blood effectively to the head and then we hypoperfuse and then you pass out. And then number three here, would be like we're looking at in this case where the blood pressure is dropping and the heart rate is elevating, but that heart rate elevation is not enough to compensate and pull that blood pressure back to a normal value. And these are very important because that's what we commonly see in these cases. So that's what we have here. In hers specifically, we found that she has small fiber neuropathy specifically on this left side over here and in her feet here and in her hands here that came post viral. And this is after a, after a viral infection that we actually saw a rash in these areas too, really helpful for us. So when we turn around and look at this one, we do see hypoperfusion on a tilt table. We do see uh, changes in that, that blood pressure response and we are going to attack it by trying to reduce that small fiber neuropathy, get that sensation back so we get adequate vasoconstriction in the legs so we can resume pumping blood up to the head in that orthostatic position. So that's what we're gonna target here. If you're trying to differentiate, I've got orthostatic hypotension, I've got POTS. In some ways, it's just names, it's semantics but it helps you communicate toward finding the right answer. And hopefully this case illustrates that. So if you got questions, send us an email or, or reach out. We'll be happy to, to talk about it more, help you however we can. So hope it helps. Take care.